Right guys, uh, just a quick introduction to the video before we get into the tutorial proper. In today's painting tutorial I'm going to be using the Foundry system pretty much exclusively. However, I appreciate that other gamers out there will be using a range of different colour ranges. So what I will do is endeavour to provide a chart here for you at the start of colour equivalents. So at each stage of the video, if you're using perhaps Citadel or Vallejo or Army Painter, you can actually use a roughly equivalent colour to achieve the same result. So I hope you enjoy guys and we'll get kicked into the tutorial proper. Welcome guys to another painting tutorial with Paul here at Bastion Games. On the table tonight we have a British Line Infantryman from front rank and this is actually the officer. So it's one of their two command sets. Um, one is in this marching pose the other is in a stat, more static pose. Um, lovely, lovely model. As you can see here, uh, he's got the covered shackle. Um, and he's got that real dynamic pose. Really nice model. Can't recommend them enough, guys. This is the first front, front rank stuff I've purchased. Um, really, really good miniatures. So in terms of paint scheme, guys, we're going to be doing this guy up as one of the... First Regiment of Foot, the Royal Scots, who were present uh, at Waterloo. And to start off tonight, we're going to be using foundry paints. And the undercoat for the coat is going to be 38A, which is scarlet. Uh, I've dipped into the foundry system in recent weeks. Uh, you can catch our first video on YouTube. And let us know what you think. So, in terms of application, we're going to pick out the coat with scarlet. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some scarlet on here. Front rank miniatures are really nice for applying the paint, guys. They're good, chunky models. Good surfaces for painting on. Nice, smooth surfaces that catch the paint really nicely. Again, not being too careful at this stage because... We could always colour correct as we go on to the later stages. But still not being too slapdash with the paint. I'm going to take that right up to his cut of colour. Again, that cannot be touched up when we come into the colour colour. And just working our way around the model. Trying to avoid the straps if I can. Just makes it a little bit easier to do them. Whenever we're applying the colour, base colour on them. So, as you can see, scarlet going on really nicely. So I'm going to zoom through the rest of the reds. Okay, first coat of Scarlet is on. While that is drying, we're going to put the base coat on our trousers. To do that, we are going to use another foundry colour, and it's going to be British Blue Grey 75B. As I mentioned in a previous video, guys, you don't necessarily have to use all three of the colours in the foundry system. You can pick and choose two of them. In this case, British Blue Grey B and C will be the trousers. So, I'm going to apply this exactly as I did with the coat on the trousers. This is a real nice deep blue grey, which is a real nice finish on the trousers. Might not be to everyone's taste, but I think it looks really, really nice. So just paying attention again. This time a little bit more careful with the application. We're going to cut quite neatly to the red coat because we've already undercoated it. Some of these other details 
We don't have to be too fussy about it at this point as they will be corrected as we come on to the later stages. And you'll see guys just how easily the foundry system is applied in terms of both speed once you get used to the flow and consistency of the paint it just really does make life quite easy just leaving the black uh, sort of boot area And I'm just going to go on ahead and apply the rest of that. So with the trousers done folks, the next step is to base coat our flesh. In this instance, I'm going to give him white gloves being an officer. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. So really the only bit of flesh we have to worry about is the face. For that I will be using Foundry Flesh Shade 5A. Okay, in good shape of paint. Give it a good stirring up. And we want to pay careful attention to the face. This is particularly thin. This foundry paint, so you might find a second application. Makes sense once you have the first one on. You'll be able to tell once it dries. Again, okay, I'm not afraid about touching the hair at this point because I can tidy it up later. Just want to make sure I got all those fleshy bits. Just under the collar, the ear. And let's not forget the other side. Same idea, a little bit of the ear exposed there, which we're just going to touch. And down under the collar. And don't forget your chin. Again, don't worry if you hit the collar area at this stage, guys, because it will be getting tidied up with the collar colour, which is blue for the Royal Scots, or the first regiment of foot. And there we have our flesh. So, with your base coats now down on the red coat, the trousers and the flesh, so you can see I've actually went back and touched that with a second coat. The last base coat that I'm going to touch uh, before moving on to the highlighting stages is going to be the sash. In this case, we're going to be using a scarlet uh, sort of deep red sash. And to do that, I'm going to actually use some Vallejo uh, burnt red. So we'll just get some of this out. And again, I'm just going to carefully apply it. I want to be very careful at this stage not to hit my undercoat colours. I really like the Vallejo Burnt Red. I'm sure there is a Vallejo or a Foundry equivalent. I just haven't. I had a proper look through the range yet to see what that might be but I imagine I'll pick it up at some stage again guys you can check out the equivalents chart at the start of the video which will give you an idea of other color, colors you can use from the likes of the Citadel range so you'll see where this runs around the model now there is small details on this sash but we will come back and add detail then at a later point. And you can see the difference in that red and the foundry red on the jacket. And that's what we want, a bit of contrast between the two. It's supposed to be, you know, some sort of um, slightly richer material to mark them out as an officer. So I'm just going to fire ahead here, guys, and apply the rest of this coat to the sash.
So guys, with that, that's as far as I go with my base layers. Um, I don't actually do the likes of the whites, the strapping, uh, the buttons, any of that. I don't like to touch just with an undercoat cloth at the minute because um, it makes more sense for me to do those just at the end. So I'm going to move on now to highlighting the coat and we're going to use the British Red Coat 68B. And as discussed in previous videos, guys, the foundry system works a little bit different from traditional paints. At this stage, you usually put a wash on the miniature been painting traditionally with foundry this paint goes straight on so the base layer essentially is actually your base coat with the wash included so what we're looking to do is pick out the raised areas so I'm going to get some of my paint and again this paint is nice and thin which actually makes this easy so instead of ultra carefully following the lines of the model what I'm going to do is use quite heavy brush strokes at this stage to apply the paint and I'm doing it in those most raised areas as you can see I'm not paying strict adherence to the shadow lines but I am trying to leave some of that scarlet colour showing through okay, this is probably the closest match to an actual red coat that you'll you'll find on the market there are other manufacturers that you can use as an equivalent but i just find this one to be the closest to red coat red itself so you can see what i've done there guys so some of that scarlet still showing through it really just practice with the eyes here guys in terms of where you apply the paint As you can see, some of those shadow lines have actually been hit, but then there is a third, a very important third layer to go on, which we'll come to later on. But for now, the aim here is really to pick out the largest areas of red with some scarlet undercolour. So I'm going to work my way around this. Just want you to see this stage in full, guys give you an idea of how I'm applying it. Just practice with your brush guys and figuring out the way the light hits the miniature. It helps that I have an overhead LED light here. However, any light will do from a, uh, the sort of angle you set the light at. You'll see where the light strikes the miniature and that's what you're using as your basis for applying the paint. As you can see in here again guys I've actually hit some of the shadows because I'm going to pick those out with the final highlight colour which we get to we don't want to forget the coat tails so just down here you can see they're very broad compared to my usual sort of highlight technique and that leaves us just in here Bits where there's going to be more shadow, guys, is obviously where you want to have your scarlet showing. Well, more of your scarlet showing. Again, you see, not too fussy with that downward highlight there. dries quite fast guys so what you can do when you come back around you'll see here a little bit of the, the sort of because the paint's quite thin and you just top it up with the brush guys typically with this consistency of paint you don't actually have to wait a full drying time you can just top it up as you go with the more traditional paints guys at this stage you will follow those shadows more closely because you will have a wash on guiding you yeah, but for the purposes of the foundry stuff, this is how we're applying it. And you'll see I've touched some of my scarlet, but again I can come back and fix that up. And there we have our first coat of Red Coat Red. And following suit with the Red Coat, we're now going to apply the first coat on the trousers. First highlight, or sorry, the final highlight coat. In this case it is the British Blue Grey 
75C from Foundry following exactly the same process as the coat guys some nice broad stroke highlights because this is a final layer I do want to pay a little bit more attention to the shadows but you'll see that the colours complement really well in the way I'm putting it on there nice confident broad strokes just catching the areas that are well lit I think this is why some people don't or are a little bit reticent to use the foundry ranges because it does take a little bit of brush control and sort of confidence with the brush to highlight this way but once you get used to it guys it's super fast and it really does make life easier be interested to hear from the guys out there actually using these paints uh, how they feel about Maybe suitability be for beginners. I mean, I'm a beginner with this system. Essentially, I've picked it up off the back of conversations with my friend Colin uh, over at Colin's Paint Studio, who uses this system pretty much exclusively. Uh, he's a big fan. And the stuff does look absolutely fantastic. You know, it's our cover miniature. Uh, on today's episode, it's actually one of Colin's miniatures. So I'm just trying to replicate that style a little bit, guys, to give you an idea of how effective this can be for painting Napoleonics there we have it guys done with the treasures The last process in this first stage of highlights will be the flesh. We're up to flesh shade 5B. As you can see there, nice peachy flesh. Now with the flesh especially guys, it's almost blocky highlighting we're going to use. So picking out the highest areas. And dabbing that paint on. And we'll see how this all pulls together in a little bit. So you'll see I'm just touching guys where the light would catch. It's not like a traditional highlight line at all I find. And then the side of the face. And there we have first flesh layer on and we're now ready to proceed to the next steps. So welcome back guys. The first step in this stage is now the sort of finishing colours and details. So the last red we're going to use on the red coat is British Red Coat 68C. Now it is, as you'll see, very, very vibrant. So we're going to use it sparingly and it's just to pick up the highest details on that coat. It's just there, little bits around the arms here. This is the bit guys where you want to leave some of the 68B showing so you will follow the lines a little more, more carefully in terms of using them to guide your highlight. You'll see how I'm applying that much more sparingly this time. Again, just brush strokes on the highest points. Pulling everything together. These really are fantastic colours for this, guys.
there we have our finished coat guys so that is completely finished at that point the coat and we'll move on to the next phase of detailing guys and to finish the flesh then we'll use the final highlight color in that series which is flesh 5c and this is literally dab highlights very highest points on the face tip of the ear chin other side again we're looking at tip of the ear cheek in there that side of the nose and the chin in on that side top lip little tiny touch up on that brow again little tiny touch see on this opposite brow and then the bridge of the nose and that is our flesh stage complete guys Again, I can tidy this all up just around where the black meets the covered shack of etc. We will come back and touch all that in. But that is our flesh done. Okay guys, now we're getting to the slightly more trickier details. And what I'm going to start with is something that sets the red coats apart. And uh, lets you know which regiment is which in a lot of cases. And this will be the cuffs and the collar. In the instance of the first regiment of foot, dubbed the Royal Scots, they are blue. I am going to be using Foundry 74B and 74C, which is their Royal Blue range. So B is going to be the base coat. And I'm going to want to do the cuffs here and the collar. So using that, make sure it's well mixed, guys. And just let you see here. It's very dark, so just be careful with your application. And I have to say, this model from front rank is particularly nice to paint. Um, it's making it quite an enjoyable exercise, in fact. So you see, that's very, very dark when you see it on. But it does make a really nice contrasting shadow colour when we get to the next step. Make sure you pick out those wee fussy bits in there. Like so. So I'll go ahead and do the other cuff in a second. But collar. I have to be a little bit careful at this stage, guys. In fact, I'm going to actually switch brush. So down from my medium to my small at this point. Just to give me an extra little bit of um, leeway. So I'll start at the back just to give me a line to work around with. You can see that going on there, hopefully. I'm going to wrap around. See him on the far side. So using the line that I've made at the back there, guys, you'll see it's given me a level to work with. there and then very carefully up and around the chin guys because we've got our flesh all done there you can see as such I'm going to go ahead here guys and I'm going to finish the other side of the collar and then the other cuff and we'll be ready for the next stage of detailing and now guys on to our golds uh, my color of choice is 44b burning gold from foundry i'm going to use this on the chin strap and also on in this instance the epaulets and um, these can be a variation of color depending on regiment guys so make sure you research your regiment uh, officers of the first were gold 
Um, so just going to pick that out carefully here. Again, using my small brush at this point. This gold's like a really flat ornate gold, which I really like. There's a different range of golds you can use really to suit your preference. I think this just stands out quite nicely. You'll see I've left a rim of black, guys. It's something to do. I don't like going back over a model uh, and touching black lines on it to bring out shadows. So I prefer to just leave the black while I'm painting. Uh, to bring out a little further layer of def definition. Uh, you're going to want to be careful up in here, guys, when we're going up into our blue undercoat we've just put on. So this does take a little bit of practice and a little bit of a steady hand. As you'll see. So he only has it on the one shoulder, guys. Just make sure you get that wee front facing bit in there, lovely, and then the chin strap guys, so just around the face. In fact he doesn't have a chin strap, that's actually just hair on this guy, so uh, other bits of gold. We'll come back to a later point, but that's where we're at for now. You can go round at this stage if you want guys, the hilt of his blade. Uh, but again, I want to leave that to a later point. Guys, for the gloves, now the gloves will end up white, as will the piping and the straps, but for the gloves only, you can also do this if, there, if this is a line in front of you and they have a knapsack, you can undercoat it with this 8B canvas from Foundry, which gives a really nice base colour for the white. However, do not use it for your straps. The straps do look better in pure white. I tend to find. So the glove area, I'm just going to pick out with this. Again, being careful around my blues that I've already put on. I'm going to do this on both hands. You can, of course, paint the hands flesh if you want, guys, so with the exact same pattern as we used on the face. So that's that hand done, and second hand. Again, careful when you're cutting to that blue, guys. Can be a little bit rougher in the sword end because the colours aren't on it yet. And if anything, putting it on a little heavier in the sword gives you a cleaner line when it comes to painting the sword so you can see what's glove and what's sword hilt and handle. And just in there, it's similarly in here, guys. So, good little technique there is to get a little bit of a blob of a paint um, and just touch in. So, you will hit parts of the sword, but what you'll see when that dries is we can now make out quite clearly what's hand slash glove and what is hilt. And just up in there, lovely. And there's always a wee line at the top here, guys. Don't forget it. And there we have our base coat for the gloves. Like so. Other points at this stage, guys, that we can maybe look at is probably, I would say, touching our sash with a little wash. Uh, because we undercoat it with a scarlet, I'm actually going to use a ready wash in this case. Tell me about my mix and match of paints. I'm going to use Carabur Crimson from GW, Citadel Paint. A slightly larger brush to apply this, and this will give it a real deep, rich red colour. So careful attention to only touch the bits we paint it. Because we have used a non-foundry colour, guys, on this, uh, we have to use a more traditional process, which involves our wash. And you can see, guys, how that's just pulling out some real crisp depth to that scarlet sash. It 
does pay to be careful at this stage, guys. I suppose that's one of the trickier parts of the foundry system, is not using washes. You're, you're relying solely on your eye and the light, as opposed to this helping differentiate between the two. You'll see there's a little bit of sash in there, which we're just going to touch. And there we have it guys, so it's coming along quite nicely. And we'll move on to the next steps, which will be to highlight up our blues. So folks, we're now ready for the highlight on the cuffs and the collar. It's going to be British Royal Blue 74C. Again, same process as we have used to date. Mix the paint well and nice chunky highlights. So we'll start, uh, I think, on this cuff, just to give you an idea of the colour difference. So just there, touch, touch. We have an additional colour we can move up to here, if it's not coming out bright enough for you guys. But we'll see how it dries. Touch and touch there. And down on this one. Same format, key and nice chunky highlights. Just leaving a little bit of that under colour showing as a shadow and a contrast. And then our colour. Again, I want to be careful at this point, guys. Not to spoil your lovely red coat that you finished. Just work our way around carefully. Nice broad highlights then when we get to the back. Same again down in here. Again guys, just let the light guide you in terms of your brush strokes and where you're putting paint on. And then up in there, we're going to want to get that picked out. Like so, so there's our blues. I think I will go up another step on those guys. But now we're on to the finer details, so the weapon, buttons and strapping guys. Okay guys, we're now nearing the finish of the tutorial and it's mostly fine details now. So the first thing I'm going to pick out is going to be the white strapping. Uh, in this instance there's only one cross strap and I'm just going to apply the 33C white straight from the pot and it's going to take two coats of that guys. You want to be super careful at this stage because we're now at the detail stage. Um, we're using a small detailed brush. This white's really nice from Vallejo. It's a little bit thin but really well pigmented in terms of an actual colour to use. So, just want to pick out my straps like so. Paying careful attention. To not hit my red. And you'll see guys, you can tell when this is going on that it's going to need a second coat, but that's fine. And we're going to work our way right up and then round the back. You'll see there's a a gold sort of front to it which we can hit with the white for now and come back and tidy it up with the gold so I'm going to fire ahead here guys and apply the rest of the white strap first and second coat Not quite out of the white yet guys, uh, we've discovered that the turnbacks are actually white on these guys, not blue, so you'll see the fold, um, the inside really of the, the coat, and same process, so two coats of white straight on, again wanting to be super careful, just to pick out the right bit. Uh, 
And again, guys, really worth taking your time at this point to be super careful with your application and not hit any of the bits you've previously painted. So we have one turn back. I'm going to hit the other one now, guys, which we can just about see on the other side. And then we're going to move on to our buttons, etc. on the sleeve. So we're looking for white on the little raised ridges. All I do, guys, is a slight glob of the paint on the brush almost. And then carefully just touch where I want the colour to go. And you can see how easy that goes on. So I'm going to fire ahead and finish that step and then we'll move on to the next one. And last but not least with the white is our gloves. So over our sort of <coughs> canvasy colour from earlier, just want to leave some of that showing. Uh, just as a sort of under colour. You can see where I'm leaving some of that showing. Again, just careful at this stage with our application. And then the sword arm. Same process. I'm looking to pick out the majority of the glove with some of that under colour showing. Like so. And then the inside. And there we have our officer's gloves. And you'll see guys on this front rack miniature we have buttons. And we have that sort of brooch and they're going to be going gold. Again using our 44B burning gold or the equivalent from the charts at the start guys. Shake. Uh, the glory of this one is it's just nice easy straight application. So again, same idea on the buttons guys, it's a dollop of paint. And you pick out where you need it to go. Just touching each button. And there we have our gold buttons on the front. Last bit of gold then guys will be the sword hilt. And you're going to want to be careful to pick it out. In straight application guys on over the undercoat here and it's very well pigmented so it gives you a lovely finish and then along the top you can hit the sword here guys because we're going to come back and tidy it up with silver in just a moment so work your way around the blade Yeah, just taking your time at this stage guys working that gold in opposite side taking care of the thumb there and up in here Some buttons in the back that I've missed. Again, same procedure. Just take your time and apply in little dollops. And 
This can be a tricky bit guys, especially for a beginner. You will get used to it with practice. Practice, practice, practice. That should be our goals. Well finished. And we're ready then to move on guys to our very finishing touches. So the first one is going to be the silver. In fact I'll do it last. I'm going to hit the sword scabbard and to do it I'm going to use the chestnut colour. I've given some variations at the start guys on that chart for what you can use. Uh, if you're using Citadel or Vallejo paints. But the scabbard here, just going to pick that out with a nice chestnut. Careful not to hit your trousers. There is a bit on the tip which is going to go gold. And just in there you'll see to be careful again. Not to hit your trouser line. There we have that. And then the silver guys. Now the silver, I don't actually own the Vallejo silvers yet. So I'm just going to apply Green Fang Steel from Citadel. Any sort of natural steel colour does here guys. And we're going to just come down and meet that gold at the hilt. You can see it's a nice vibrant silver. It is quite thin so you might need to go back over it twice guys just to give you the finish you want there we have our first coat on the sword now that leaves literally the hair a little bit of gold detailing on the scabbard and a little bit of the white um, cloth in there that I actually missed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit those. So back to our gold. Just to pick out the detail on the scabbard. See, you'll see a little bit at the bottom here. And there's a little bit at the top, up oh, where our sash is. As you can see that gives a nice finish in there. Just going to top that gold up a little bit. And then that last little bit of white and we are in business. And ready for the table. Yeah, part of the base. Again, same process in here, guys. That little bit of white. We'll need two coats because it's going straight on over black. Just taking care not to hit anything in there. And there we have it, guys. Our finished product. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in and watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, feel free to drop some comments, questions below. And enjoy. Thanks very much.